Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Software Engineer K, and we've got quite a lot of stuff to go through today. Uh, we're going to be going through um, some of the changes to Google's ad policy, so um, how that um, Ecomi can leverage that just to support their um, growth and uh, you know, how they can also leverage that in order to support the utility of the OMI token as well. Um, we're also going to be touching on the uh, San Diego Comic-Con, just how to get involved with that, um, because they are going to be Comic-Con exclusive. And um, I will touch a little bit on later on, because uh, that was covered in the AMA on Discord with Reese and Trevor. Um, and I did also want to share with you guys just another deep dive into the code, um, because we are using um, AR Core. And I just want to share with you guys some of the developments that have been happening in AR Core and just how that can benefit the overall user experience for VV as well, um, because I think that is something really, really cool and uh, something that everyone should be aware of, but at the same time, um, I don't believe that's going to come anytime soon, and I will share why I believe so as well. Um, so firstly, we know that Google has announced uh, policy changes to the cryptocurrency ads. So um, in the past, they pretty much outright banned all cryptocurrency ads, ICOs, anything related to wallets, exchanges, all of that stuff, um, just because of the regulatory hassle it was creating. You know, there was a lot of people yeah, getting rug pulled um, and they needed some kind of control over it. So um, if you do want to now actually advertise crypto products, there's a limitation of what you can do. Um, and you also need you know, to get registered with FinCEN as well because they do um, kind of audit this stuff. So uh, for anyone who's not familiar with FinCEN, um, I became familiarized with them through the XRP lawsuit because FinCEN, um, contrary to the SEC, they said that Ripple XRP is a cryptocurrency, not a security, whereas the SEC, um, they are trying to um, push the opposite opinion. So definitely get familiarized with that lawsuit because it is going to affect cryptocurrency markets as a whole, not just Ripple, which is kind of like the uh, mistake that some people are making. Um, so it's definitely, definitely important that you know anyone is following what's happening right now. Um, so. We know that at the moment, um, even with the changes, as for initial coin offerings, uh, DeFi trading protocols, um, anything that promoting purchase, sale, or trade of cryptocurrencies, is still going to be banned. But we know that Ecomi is not just the VV app. You know, it's got multiple parts to the business. Um, it has other parts in the business. In the past, I believe they were trying to get like a um, payment uh, banking app um, that uses crypto as well. Um, I think it's called Ecomi One. Um, but I, I don't know what happened to that actually. But we do know that they have the secure wallet still. Um, obviously, that's going to be getting restocked and they are going to have branded secure wallets. So that is going to be perfectly fine for them to advertise um, to mainstream masses. And we have discussed in the past, you know, in AMAs that as we get, you know, more promotion of the secure wallet, could the uh, proceeds of the sales, could a fraction of that go towards maybe OMI buybacks, OMI burn, for example, because then that gives more utility to OMI. Um, and at the same time, it also encourages more people to buy um, their secure wallet because there are other competitors in the space as well. And, you know, if they do that, then that's even better for OMI. That's even better for their business overall if they sell more secure wallets, uh, because it's just another part of their business. So that is just something else to think about as well. But, you know, for the time being, um, we are going to start to see changes in regulations. And I think Ecomi is positioned in a very, very good place where they can benefit from that. Um, and on that point, I did also want to touch on San Diego Comic-Con. So um, this is something that Reese spoke about in the AMA. I'll touch on that later on. But there are going to be Comic-Con exclusive NFT drops. So for anyone who is curious, um, all you need to do to sign up and get involved is when you go to the comiccon.org um, website, if you go to comiccon slash badges slash badge info, um, it will take you to this registration link. And all you need to do is sign up. Um, it will ask you to confirm your address in the first 30 days. Um, otherwise, they'll rescind your account, which is easy enough to do. But you know, once you are signed up, um, you have your member ID. Um, so mine is HelloK, as you can see. Um, and from there, you can start to get involved with you know all of the good Comic Con stuff. And you know, we, you know, Vivi is going to be there um, online. I'm not quite sure how it works. You know, I didn't see the process of how it worked last year when they did it online. But it is going to be pretty interesting to see. I'm sure they're going to be dropping some pretty cool stuff. I think you know, out of the kind of online events they've had so far, these NFT summits and stuff, it didn't make sense for them to reveal stuff at you know those kind of events. But at a comic-con event you know where it's literally just about you know you've got the fandoms in front of you um what can you give them i think that kind of stuff i am more positive that they'll reveal some cool stuff because these are the kind of events where a lot of uh you know these companies brands they do reveal cool stuff um you know if you have a look at a lot of the 
um, kind of movies, early preview trailers for like a lot of, you know, big pop culture films, they will release the trailer at a Comic-Con event, for example. Um, so it just makes sense for them to tease something at Comic-Con. Um, but we do know that we are going to get the NFT, um, kind of like the exclusive NFTs there for Comic-Cons. Now, we had the um, AMA last night. And what I wanted to do first is just share a question that I asked with regards to the assets, because this was a question that was asked to me to ask to Trevor. Um, but obviously, it was after the AMA, so you know, I couldn't ask him. But it is a pretty good question. So it gave me the chance to ask him now. So I just wanted to share that for a second. Showroom. Um, I don't know if you can say or not, but uh, can we expect the kind of showroom blocks and plinths to be those kind of like plain looking white ones or would we get something a bit more different um kind of like how the original delorean wasn't the one that was released it was a nicer looking version uh yeah so i think what you're seeing in that original release and i'm not entirely familiar with what the asset is but uh we often do like test assets to like when we're showing up those like kind of concepts as you can imagine so that was probably a test asset asset and probably a test plinth asset um our plan is to uh there we're trying to achieve a, uh, a specific and higher quality art style across the uh the, the new showroom the new gallery that we're building um and that will extend to those kinds of plinths and uh kind of decorative showroom materials i guess you could call it so yeah, I would expect the new one to look better than a plain white engineer art-esque box like you probably saw in the original one. Okay, so there you go. The question was essentially around the showroom. So um, in the demos, if you guys have seen it, you know, we've got these uh, white boxes, which the NFT sit on top of. Obviously, um, you know, as Trevor said before, he's described a lot of these assets as unshippable. Um, where you know the quality is just not there and a plain white box you know uh the quality is not something that i would want um personally i would want something a bit more you know fancy looking so i believe when they do get around to that um we are gonna get something that looks a bit different to what we currently have in the demo app and the demo kind of um, images as well um but there were some other cool notable questions as well um one with regards to additions so you know people have complained about too many commons and uncommons and you know they said that they need content in there for um you know people who are going to be joining um the app through you know the search caused by comic-con for example um you know the roger and cohen advertising but they have said that you know they are going to amend the addition numbers um there's also been allusions to you know if there's too many that they may just um you know uh, suspend the sales um and it may be time limited for example as well um that's something that david Hu has spoken about so you know they, 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 it is a company that's built by collectors they understand scarcity and all these things so um i wouldn't be too worried about it um and one of the other um, notable questions that was asked was um, with regards to kind of um, the master collector program. So we know that buying NFTs isn't going to be the only way to get points. You'll be able to get points through doing certain activities in the app um, just to encourage people to kind of um, proactively get involved in the app, you know, be active users, not just, you know, passive users that only ever log in to buy and flip NFTs. So again, um, I see them encouraging this. And I think that encouragement, that kind of activism within the app is going to be really, really beneficial when they start to roll out the VVverse as well, um, because we know that there's going to be a much greater interactive aspect, aspect involved with that. And it will be cool to, you know, get master collector program uh, points if you kind of do things in that um, capacity as well. Um, now, what I did also want to touch on is if we just jump straight into the um, code as well. So we know that they currently have the um, Google AR core packages within there. So um, it stands to reason that, you know, they're using the Google AR core APK. So in the back end, you know, they're using Google AR Core to render these um, NFTs in AR. And AR Core does have some pretty cool benefits and they have had quite a lot of um, advancements as well. So I just wanted to share with you guys um, what we can expect in terms of VV NFTs um, in the future. We're used to AR at our fingertips, giving us useful and fun experiences. Your content though, often looks like it's pasted on the screen rather than in the world. What if AR Core could supercharge your camera, bringing the world into your phone by giving you color and depth at every pixel that it sees? We've squeezed all of our software magic into the new AR Core Depth API, 
so that with just a single moving camera, we can give you 3D understanding of the world on over 200 million Android phones. This means that we can start properly occluding objects like our 3D Tiger. But occlusions are just one aspect of immersive AI experiences. When your camera understands 3D space, your content can realistically collide with the world, or even just stick to it instead of bouncing around. And your characters can move around your space naturally on any terrain. Or you can transform the world around your users by using particle-based effects, such as snow piling up in your surroundings, or splashing rain, basically blending the real and the virtual. And if your phone has an active depth sensor, all of these depth space effects can get even better. It's all about, you know, trying to pull in as much information from the real world into your digital world so that you can really help these augmented objects feel grounded in the real world. You know, you're looking at things like light estimation, environmental HDR, and now I see depth as just kind of one additional layer to really have those objects feel like they exist in the real world. With Houses View My Room feature, we want to help people make much more confident buying decisions by letting them preview products in their own space before they make a purchase. Google's solving a really, really challenging technical problem here. And the greatest part of it is that it's actually available to a really wide range of Android phones without any specialized hardware. So it really is something that we can bring to mass market to help people have a much better preview experience. We partner with the studio MediaMarks to explore how we could turn your physical environment into a creative canvas with depth. By better understanding your physical space, we're able to really turn it into a new world, into a different dimension, allowing us to hide characters behind objects and furniture, enabling new types of interaction, even being able to paint what's around you thanks to augmented reality. If we really look at what a Unity developer to combine with the AR core technology for depth can do is you drag in a component, you easily pull in that data, and you can start easily make sense out of it and also have it combined with all the other systems in Unity. If it's particle systems, or if it's navigation meshes for characters, or it's just occlusion to make sure that things blend in well. Those are the core pieces that we, together with Google, make easy and accessible for Unity developers. And we need developers like you to help us build the future. These experiences are just scratching the surface of what's possible with depth. If you have an idea that you'd like to build using the Depth API, fill out our Call for Collaborators form in the description below. We're looking for a few more developers over 2020 to help us build out a new wave of AR experiences. Thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to see what you build with the AR Core Depth API. So there you go, guys. Um, we can expect some pretty cool stuff, specifically occlusion and you know phones with depth perception. Now, the reason why I believe this isn't going to come anytime soon, even though it's really cool, is firstly, um, Trevor has said this before, is they want to focus on content because content is what's going to bring in the users because um, people are already familiar with the brands and licenses that they have, especially the hardcore fans. So they're going to be attracted to the app. Um, they're not going to be attracted by cool AR. So that is one key point. Now, as they join the app, then it becomes about retention. And then, you know, it is an iterative process. They're going to develop the experience and improve on it over time. And I believe, you know, leveraging all of these new functionalities and features from AR Core, um, you know, the occlusion and depth perception, all of that good stuff, that is something that's going to happen over time. But at the same time, Trevor has said that it is mainly about accessibility right now, which is why they focus so much on AR versus VR, because um, not everyone has a wearable headset, like I personally don't. Um, whereas most people have phones that have AR functionality. Um, and obviously newer phones that have the depth perception as well, they'll be able to leverage, you know, the occlusion aspect of NFT. So it adds that kind of realism to it as well. Um, not just, you know, when someone walks in front of your NFT, they're kind of walking behind it, even though technically they're in front of it. It's like your NFT just superimposed over the uh, real world. So having that extra bit of perception, like it's, it is very, very powerful. Um, but again, not all phones have depth perception. Uh, my phone does just because it's a newer phone, the Galaxy S21, but Again, accessibility as the technology and hardware becomes more accessible and improves, um, we can start to see you know um, improvements within that VV experience. Uh, now, lastly, what I did also want to touch on is just the price of Omi today. Um, so I did have a pending buy. Um, and I bought in at around about 0 0.28, 0 0.27 in that range. Um, so around about the middle part here. Now, I believe that we are um, going to be continuing on 
an uptrend just because the market is starting to move up omi hasn't done anything miraculous it's just following the market and i do see the market starting to recover now um there has been you know some kind of interesting news with russia and their eco economic war with the us um i personally think that's going to be a bull case for cryptocurrency and um bitcoin in particular just because um russia has um kind of essentially sold off any usd denominated assets um they're investing more in china and europe now because of uh, you know the sanctions imposed of them through interfering with the us elections now we can see that we are forming a bit of a wedge here well a very very huge wedge okay i'm gonna draw this very roughly just so you guys can see okay now that's obviously not perfect i can like bring this down Okay, let's bring it down to about there. So we are approaching a potential breakout, and I believe that breakout can happen, you know, any time this month. But obviously, that is dependent on Bitcoin. However, you know, we are on a pretty, um, pretty good point now where we can expect some upwards price movement. Uh, I'm expecting between 0 0.4, 0 0.5 cents is where we're going to go to next. But Again, like I say, always is dependent on Bitcoin. So we'll see. Um, but I personally have made a pretty decently sized buy around about here just because it's a it's at a good price. Um, I bought, you know, around the highs and I just been dollar cost averaging down. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything I want to go through with you guys today. Um, like always, please do like and subscribe to support the content. I'll keep you guys updated with anything else I find out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.